my YouTube live. As you tune in, please say hi in the chat box and let me know where you're watching from. And we're going to have a great time. For anyone watching this later on replay, this is a live video. So the whole point is for me to chit chat with people, say hi, answer questions, etc. So if that's not your kind of video, then just feel free to not watch and that is totally okay. All right. So I hope you guys are ready to have a fantastic time. Let me move this a little bit this way. And let's get started. Okay. So today we are going to do a resin pour on a vase. And I'm going to go ahead and mix up my resin to start off with. Actually, first I'm going to pull up this video on my computer so I can see your guys' chats in the chat box. There we are. Hey, Joanne. Hey, Christine with a K. Rhonda, Kathy. Nice to see you again. Linda, Nate. Welcome, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet done so. Okay. Aw, thank you, Rhonda. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> okay, I hope everyone had a fantastic New Year's. Mine was interesting. This definitely felt like a super weird New Year's. How about you guys? I think a lot of people just kind of stayed in and just did whatever. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start off by mixing the resin. I'm using Mixed Media Girl Artist Resin and I did preheat this a bit because it is um, Los Angeles cold here. Now I'm almost at the end of my bottles, so I'm gonna just mix it all. And whatever I have left over from this project, I will be using in some other projects. I have a few pieces that just need some clear resin in there, so. Yay, Donna. So good to hear that. All right, so it looks like we're gonna get about 16 ounces here. And let's just let that kind of drain into there for just a minute. Yeah, it didn't feel like Christmas either, totally. It definitely, it's felt like a really weird end of the year, but not necessarily bad, just weird. Um, yeah. But anyways, all right, almost there. So I like to start with part A, or sorry, part B. Um, that's this one because it is the thinner of the two. So you can probably see part A is taking me a little longer to pour out because it's a little bit thicker. That's okay. We just want basically equal parts of each. If you're gonna use a little tiny bit more of either part, I'd say to use a little bit more of part A. It won't hurt anything, but by a tiny bit more, I mean like an ounce or two, you know, like not a lot. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. So there we go. We've got about 16 to 17 ounces in there. Um, I'm going to use this. I like to reuse my stir sticks until they're basically not usable anymore. I think this one will do. Can't even see what I'm doing on here. I'm watching an ad. <laughs> Whoops. All right, and then here we're gonna stir, stir for about three to four minutes, give or take. Uh, make sure you scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. It's really important to get a complete mix. Oh, my computer. I hope I'm in the screen and everything because I can't see what, there we go, okay. All right. Um, I didn't preheat this for very long, so it is still a little bit on the colder side, but not too bad. I just had about 10 minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes to preheat this. So, um, this may be a new tray mold. I don't know. It looks awfully clean. Sometimes I, not sometimes, all the time though, I hide, hide silicone molds from myself. So it probably isn't really new. Probably had it for a long time. <laughs> just, just newly found it. I wish I had um, a lint roller here though. I might have to get in here with a little bit of tape because there's a little, little stuff in here, but we're gonna be using colors. We're not going for clear, so it should be fine. All right, stir, stir, stir. Let's 
scrape the sides. Scrape the bottom. Um, by the way, guys, I have an art auction ending on Facebook in less than an hour. So Veronica, can you grab the link for that real quick? Um, Sylvie, was that a question or a statement? Let me know. But yes, it is food safe. I'm just not sure if you were asking or telling, <laughs> telling me. Because it's cold, I'm gonna just mix it for a little bit longer than I typically would, just to make sure. Um, you know where your resin stays a little sticky or a little bendy? Um, that's because you didn't mix it fully. So I'd rather over mix than under mix. And with this resin having such a long work time, it's really hard to over mix. Hey, Erin, good to see you again. All right, I think we're about good here. I feel fairly confident in this. So I wanted to do like ocean colors for this. I've been doing a lot of red and gold, uh, but we're gonna do some ocean colors. So I need to get the tray cover, to get the tray filled and, I'm just gonna take some tape here and clean this out a little bit. And to cover my vase, uh, I need probably about four ounce, uh, sorry, uh, I'm gonna say like eight ounces of resin. So I don't quite need 16. So I'm not gonna mix up color in all of this. Just in some, I'm just getting some little particles out of here with tape. This is a very high tech procedure. If you have a lint roller, that works even better. <laughs> okay. Yes, again, it is food safe. All right, let's get our colors out here. So I'm gonna do some white, some gold, some blue, and maybe some green, I think. Although the gold and the blue will make green, I really like this jade, so I think I'll do some of that. All right, hold on. And we don't need a lot, which is good because I don't have a lot of that color left. Excellent. <laughs> no worries, Sylvie. We'll make sure we get your questions answered. Okay, and then I'm gonna use gold. And for the gold, I'm gonna also put gold dust. So this is gold metallic. And then I'm gonna put a ton of gold dust so that it's really sparkly. Yeah, guys, if you have not followed Nate yet, please go follow him. He's amazing. I just taught classes alongside him at Fluid Art Experience. So check him out. All right, and then I'm gonna use a white dye. Pro tip, open the dye, then use it. And the white is pretty opaque, excuse me. And then I'm gonna use ocean blue. Oh no, I just took the lid off of it somehow. <laughs> okay, I'm just making a mess over here. So I'm using some ocean blue dye. These are Alumalite resin dyes. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of sky blue mica powder just to make it a little lighter because the dye by itself can be pretty overpowering or pretty dark. So this will this will lighten it up. It'll tell it a joke or two, you know? Just put a little bit of that in there. Okay. All right, now we've got all our colors. We're gonna add the resin and get this mixed up. So not a lot of green, just a little bit. And I don't really care if I get a little resin accidentally into the tray. That's okay. All 
All right, I definitely poured more than eight ounces, so we'll probably do some coasters too. And I'm gonna save this clear for another project. Okay, let's move the colorants out of the way. Let's get this stirred up. <laughs> okay. So here's our gold, it's really sparkly. Now keep in mind the gold is gonna be pretty transparent. So do not be alarmed, don't cry when it disappears. It's going to give it this gorgeous sparkle, okay? Whether it makes like this grand appearance or not, it's still gonna be there and it will still be very noticed. I didn't have a lot of this green, so this is also quite transparent. That's okay. That's okay. Try to do the feather technique. Just takes a little practice. No worries. Now this white is going to be nice and opaque and then the blue will be pretty opaque also. So those are going to be our two dominant colors. Okay. These cups are five ounce cups, so I'd say there's about three ounces each of the white, the blue, and the gold, and then about two and a half of the green. So we definitely have more than eight ounces here. That's okay. Look at that luscious blue. So pretty, hope you guys can see that. All right, now we've got this tray mold here to catch the runoff. We're gonna put the cup here and I may adjust the camera just a little bit. One second. Can you use the marble in a resin pour? I don't think it's going to do a lot, to be honest. I think you'll just end up with a sticky marble, but hey, no harm, no harm in trying it, you know? All right, let me have this point up a little bit more. I'm gonna actually, can everyone see that okay? I'm gonna move my laptop out of the way over here. Just gonna stick it on this side. Oh yeah, steel marble. Yeah, that might actually work because, yeah, that's the other thing too, is marbles are pretty light and resin is very thick in general, unless you really heat it up or you have a really thin, <laughs> or it's a good band name, Nate. Okay. That's far too many sticks. Close, extra cup, all right. Here we go. Yeah, anything is worth a try. I fully, fully agree. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with kind of a base coat of this blue this gorgeous, luscious blue. Now, a lot of times people go, why put all that color on there just to cover it up? It's not covered up. It all makes a difference. The colors all, every single one of them makes a difference, okay? So for instance, if we put gold on here now, we're gonna start getting some green and we're gonna start getting some sparkle. Trust me, it all makes a difference. Even if it seems like it's fully covered up by the end, and every single color, every single layer matters, okay? Don't you worry. Plus, we're making the really cool pattern on the tray bowl, okay? So, here's that green, a little brighter than I wanted. Let me put, I'm going to actually put a drop of the blue dye in this green. That's a little too, too light and bright. So we'll make it a little more teal with one drop of blue. Because otherwise it seems a little pointless. And hopefully it's not, it might be pretty similar to the other color, at least through the camera, but it's definitely different. Okay, so this 
first initial part here is just getting the vase covered. We're not trying to do anything else. Just get it covered. And then we'll come back and work on our design, okay? I'm looking at the computer to see how I'm doing on that side. Make sure I'm getting all the spots. Ooh, I'm liking this. A little more white. Okay. Can you do a ring pour with resin? You can, but not really. It will really blend. I've had quite a bit of success doing a traveling tree ring with resin. But um, if you try to do just a regular old ring pour, it really, really blends. I'm gonna come around and see if there's any sides over there I need to get. One second. Nope, we're good. Okay. So now we get a little more deliberate with our design. I'm gonna kind of take the stick and even if you guys can't see it through the camera, this blue is a lot more green. This is the one I mixed with that jade and it is so pretty, super pretty. Now doing it this way, we're gonna get drips on the bottom of the vase. I personally love that. I know some other people that hate it, but that's on them. I had someone on the last video of this that I did say, no one would ever like that. And I'm like, <laughs> you are so wrong, it's not even funny. But you know, people think that their opinion is the same as everybody else's, even though it's not. If you don't like the drips though, there's a couple things you can do. One, you can kind of babysit it and run your finger along the rim as it's drying. Or two, you can just sand it down when it's dry. Totally up to you. But I love the drips as part of my design and that's just me. Hey, Teresa. Welcome, welcome. All right, we're gonna do just a little bit more on here, not too much. And then we'll take the vase out and we'll finish um, the tray. So you can kind of see I'm going in like a crisscross kind of pattern. If you want it to be more stripey, you can absolutely do that. Totally up to you. I like the kind of crisscross pattern here. Also important note, do not get married to the design in the tray. It is going to change so much as it goes. Hey Maddie, happy new year. It's gonna change so much as it dries. So just be prepared for that. Don't wanna break anyone's heart. And I'm gonna end up with gold on the top here, plus that kind of bluey green that I made. Um, gold because it's the most transparent, the bluey green because I really like it. And then I think after this little run of color, I'm done. Um, the colors on the vase will definitely get more transparent as it continues to run. So if you want them to stay a little bit better, you can kind of let the resin cure for a bit and then do some more line, lines. ATD is not on live tonight. I have no idea. Or is that a statement? <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, is that a question? I don't know. But yeah, if you want your lines to stay a little bit more then go ahead and just let the resin cure a bit. Going a little heavy handed on the gold, because like I said, it's pretty transparent and it may seem like it's kind of in your face right now, but it'll change. It'll kind of disappear, so. Um, oh, it's a statement, okay. Yeah, it's like Van Gogh, like Starry Night. So 
So real quick, I'm going to take my torch. And this is just to get rid of the air bubbles. I'm going to go really quick on it, though, because I don't want to blend the colors. And heat will make it run more and make it more blended. So I just go pretty quick just to get rid of air bubbles. I think that's good. Okay. I love it. And the vase will also change as it dries. That's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move the vase off to the side and we will finish the tray. I'm gonna let it drip for a minute though while I grab the handles for this. Um, darn it, Marcy. I'm gonna tell you guys, I had every intention of using silver and not gold in this. I literally did. And then I was gonna use silver handles but I messed it up. The vase is even prettier on this side, you guys. I can, I can kind of rotate it here. It's gorgeous on both sides, but here's how it looks on this side. I think it's prettier on this side, but that's just me. <laughs> ah, someday I will make myself use silver. Sorry about that. This gives me an excuse to use my big handles. I know, right, Veronica? I just remembered when I went to get the handles and I was about to grab the silver and then I was like, oh no. <laughs> okay. I love it too, thanks Linda. All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to move the vase off to the side. Looks like a tidal wave in the tray. Yeah. But remember, the tray is going to really change. Like really, really change. Trust me. Really, really change. So if I wanted my lines to be a little more pronounced at this point, now that the resin's been sitting here, the vase has been sitting here, I would put a little more on here before moving the vase off. But I am quite happy with this. So I'm going to lift it up by the cup. Gently move this off to the side. This is going to fill in. I'm going to actually help it a little bit. And just as a note, this tray mold is not even remotely full. Okay. Um, so there will be another clear layer of resin that goes over this. Let me let it sit for just a second there. Hello, Vicki. I'm going to just adjust the camera a little bit here one second or at least see where this goes that's pretty good let's put this down a little more sorry for that jerkiness there a little bit okay I totally just got resin all over my tripod, so I hope it's not <laughs> ruined now. Um, you can put something uh, solid under here like a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood, but I know how much this is going to change anyways, so I am totally fine with tilting it. Tilt it slowly, you don't want to go too crazy because you can go over the edge. Once you shove it to one side, let it sit for a minute and fill out. And then adjust as needed. So for me, it helps that it is a little more fluid than if I had a board or something underneath here. Flexible, rather. Oh, yay, Teresa, that's awesome. Why do I gotta be so Jerry? I don't know. Who's Jerry? He must be a really cool guy. I missed it. That's okay. I'm just going to get this little corner here, this little corner here. Come on, you can do it. All right, good enough. And then we'll get this side. Oh, <laughs> jerky. 
<laughs> you guys, such jokesters. Ooh, that looks gorgeous. I wish it was gonna stay like that. Ah, that's why I gotta constantly remind myself and everybody else, do not get married to the design. It is not gonna look even remotely like this when it's dry. It just isn't. But this is so pretty. <laughs> I'm a little jerky sometimes. One last corner here to get. And then you can move your design around all you want, but once again, not gonna make much difference. Okay. Woo hoo hoo, that's so pretty. All right, come on, get in there. Okay, boom. All right. Yes, it will still be gorgeous no matter what because these colors are gorgeous. So now we don't want to use a torch or a heat gun on the tray. So we're going to spritz it with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. And that is to get rid of the air bubbles. And then we are going to delicately place our handles in here. And these are just like basically drawer pulls from Amazon. These are the slightly bigger ones. And once this layer cures, I'll put a clear coat on the top and that'll be that. <laughs> um, would you use the heat to move it and create patterns too? I wouldn't because I want it to stay as close to this as possible and the heat will blend. I'm hoping that some of these lines at least stay in there during the drying period. Uh, you don't even need to use the alcohol too much because I'm going to put a clear coat over this. So honestly, who cares if there's air bubbles? But I definitely don't want to use heat on here because I'm praying that even though I know it's probably not going to, I'm praying that some of this design stays. Okay, so that's that on that. And now I'm going to take this clear resin and I am going to... Yeah, the vase has totally changed. See that? Oh no. I forgot that I just got resin all over my um, tripod. <laughs> I just did it and I just forgot it. So I'm gonna carefully move this out of the way. I'm gonna double check my handles over here. They look good, looks good, okay. And now I'm gonna wrap up a couple other projects that just need clear. So look at this gorgeous tray. Um, and then I've got some gorgeous coasters. These are from New Year's, the black and gold and white and silver. These, I don't remember what it's from. Something. <laughs> What do you cover your workspace with? Uh, this is just paper and then I have plastic underneath that. Um, I do change out the paper and I leave the plastic for as long as I can. Let me just point the camera down just a little bit more with gloves on. I know I'm in love with the black and gold one too. I can't wait to demold it. Here, let me show you guys a little bit closer because it's got this gorgeous holographic color in there. Obviously it's super glossy, so it's pretty hard to show, but there we go. And then the coasters match pretty well. And then these are just random ones. <laughs> so I think what we'll do, we will put a tiny, tiny, tiny smidge of gold dust in here because I want that as a top coat on all of these. And by tiny smidge, I mean so tiny, the smallest amount. Actually, I'm gonna just, no, that has gold in it. I just want gold dust, Never mind. <laughs> yeah, if you guys wanna see the creation of these guys, 
Uh, you'll have to check out my Amazon Live from last Saturday. So do you ever put anything under the vase so they just drip to create other small projects like posters? You know, I haven't, I don't think, but that wouldn't be a bad idea. So when I say tiny amount, I mean tiny, tiny. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea, but the resin is going to stick to the cup, so you'd have to continually move it, basically, because uh, otherwise it'll just pull right out of the silicone mold. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I want to finish this, this tray and coasters first, so I'm going to start off with those just to make sure I have enough, and then I'll do that last set of coasters if I have some left. I don't think I'm going to. There's a little piece of dried resin in here from the stick. Whoopsie daisies. Okay, so I'll have enough for that and barely for the coasters. That's okay. I meant to leave a little more clear, but oh well. This stick is really something. <laughs> I know Veronica does not understand this tiny smidge of gold dust. She goes a little cray cray with it. Okay. These are almost full, so I'm not too worried about it. I really don't need a lot. Just, just enough to get a little top coat in there is all I want. So now that I've got the resin out, I'm going to take the stick and I'm going to make sure I get full coverage. I'm gonna kind of just move it around. This does take a minute. It's not the most exciting process. You're pretty much just making sure that the resin gets into every single crevice. Now here, heat will actually help. So I may heat this with a heat gun. Oh, stay safe, Deborah. Good luck. We don't really understand that here in Los Angeles, but you know, if an earthquake happens, it happens. We're not really prepared. <laughs> I mean, we're sort of prepared, but we don't really know what's coming. Okay. So just basically moving it into every little crevice here. And then that's it. Pretty simple. You can also tilt it, but I think just using the stick is a little easier. All right. <laughs> Yeah, who here has never used resin before? Let me know. It is definitely a whole different world. Very different from acrylic pouring, but with, of course, some crossover as well. Like you can do kind of some techniques with resin that you could do with acrylic pouring. And of course you can seal all your acrylic pours with resin. So it is kind of hard to get around the handle here. You just got to be careful. Uh, pro tip though, if you accidentally do get it on the handle, then just use some isopropyl alcohol and that'll clean it right off. Okay, just about done with this tray. It's a little bigger, so some brand new people here. Awesome, Bonnie. Well, I have, no, actually, I think those are sold out. Yeah, I may, I may see if I can put together some more. I put these like resin mystery boxes up that I'm super excited about. Um, Veronica helped me put them together and then I went and added even more stuff to them. <laughs> so. We ended up with a little 
less than she made, but don't tell her. Okay, good. Um, there's still a little more to do on this, but I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun real quick, which will make this a little bit easier, make that resin a little more fluid. And then we're good. You haven't used resin either, Nate? Oh my goodness. Well, I know what's gonna happen the next time we're together. Let me check to see if there's any more of the resin mystery boxes left because I made a few more of them today. So, give me a second. And let's get the heat gun. Knock it off the table. Okay. Yeah. So, Veronica, do you want to grab the link for that? Two resin mystery boxes. Actually, since I'm here, I can grab it. Two resin mystery boxes left. If anyone wants to try them out, here we go. Okay. Oh, Veronica might have gotten it before me. Oh no, I got it. Okay. There we go. All right. Here we go. So this is going to pop the air bubbles and make it more fluid. Don't overdo it though because you can ruin your mold. overfilled this friggin mold a little bit so I'm gonna take a little out of that really quick it is addicting Jenny Jenny's come to my workshop and so much fun all right so if you overfill a mold this resin actually domes so what that means is it gets literally like a dome which I don't like that on my coasters personally so I'm going to take just a little bit of that resin out so it does not do that. A little excess resin there. It only needed a very little bit and I got a little excited. Okay. So that should be good. And now a couple little spots on the side to fix here and then we're good. And guys, if you ever have any questions about resin, please feel free to message me. I am also doing in-person workshops here in Los Angeles. I've got one coming up this weekend. I've got one coming up in a few weeks with Erica from Artist Till Death. She's coming out. So you can always come in person. Um, and then I've also got the resin course online and tons of videos. Okay, there we go. I think we've got all the spots here. I'm gonna do one last quick check. And to do that, I'm gonna get rid of the air bubbles because that makes it much easier to see. And it looks good. Um, I can ship to Australia, but I ain't gonna lie, it's very expensive. So, um, I would recommend getting like the online course, which of course doesn't require shipping and then purchasing like a local resin, at least for now, until I figure out shipping internationally or not shipping internationally. I do ship internationally, but until I figure out uh, getting like suppliers internationally, if that makes sense. Oh yeah. And we have a sale on the courses. <laughs> All right, guys. That's about it for today. Go get your bids in um, on the auction. 
sign up for some courses, get one of those last two mystery boxes if you would like. Do you use resin heat mats? I don't, but you could. You mean like to preheat the resin? Is that what you mean? Or like underneath your projects or what? I usually preheat my resin with a, um, a space heater. Both, okay. Yeah, no, I haven't, but definitely not a bad idea at all. Okay. <laughs> all right, have a great evening, everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.